If you've been on the internet for any length of time, you've probably heard of Reddit. It is one of the largest websites on the internet, though it doesn't deserve to be. Not anymore. To understand why, let's begin with a brief summary of what it is, or rather, what it used to be. Reddit is a website where you can join communities or create forums to discuss a diverse set of subjects, ranging from products like games, movies and TV shows, to politics and social issues. You can start these discussions by either sharing your thoughts via text or submitting a link to another website. With that said, the scope of what you can say is rapidly shrinking and has been for several years now. This clampdown on the platform's freedom of expression did not occur overnight, but in a series of steps that began in the mid-2010s. This video does not argue against the rampant censorship, but rather the hypocrisy of Reddit and the dishonest pretext they present to justify the censorship. To find the cause, let's look at the people who run Reddit, starting with those who do most of the legwork. Moderators. Moderators are unpaid volunteers, though more like a hall monitor than a charity worker. Moderators control subdivisions of Reddit, called subreddits, in which they set up and enforce their own rules in addition to the rules set by the employees. Why do they do this for free? Because of the power this position grants them over regular users. These volunteers are free to exclude and expel anyone they like for any reason, or no reason at all. This often results in an abuse of these powers, which is allowed if not encouraged by Reddit employees. Why? Because in exchange for getting to play Tyrant, the volunteers enforce Reddit's policy for free and protect the platform by removing any content that might cause trouble for the website. Reddit runs on a rigid hierarchy, wherein volunteers are free to shit on the people below them as long as they lick the boots of their superiors. The employees have outsourced most of the website's management to volunteers in exchange not for money, but for the perception of power. As their only compensation, volunteers are free to flex their privileges over regular users by threatening unwarranted bans and following through with it even while the user has broken no rules. Moderators who have wormed themselves into positions of power over multiple subreddits often abuse that power to ban users they don't like from every community they control. In theory, Reddit's moderator guidelines require volunteers to not use a breach of one set of community rules to ban a user from another community. Take appeals seriously. Moderator responses to appeals by their users should be consistent, germane to the issue raised and work through education, not punishment. However, these guidelines are followed neither by volunteers nor by the employees and are as irrelevant as Reddit's content policy, but more on that later. Case in point, several subreddits have created bots that ban users for participating in other communities, subreddits they don't like, to be specific, which is a blatant violation of the guideline against using a breach of one set of community rules to ban a user from another community. Reddit has been reluctant to even admonish the communities that issue preemptive bans, let alone discourage or God forbid, stop them. We could find only one instance of a volunteer being reprimanded for breaking the guidelines, specifically the rule requiring moderator responses to take appeals seriously and work through education. A moderator was suspended for muting a subscriber and was given the following justification. Your account has been suspended from Reddit for breaking Reddit. The suspension will last three days. Banned for abusing mod powers and not providing reason and muting polite inquiry by user. This was slightly encouraging, as it demonstrated some initiative to curb the pervasive authoritarianism of most volunteers. But it didn't take long for Reddit to remove the punishment. This reversal of enforcement stripped their guidelines of any legitimacy and signaled the website's tactic approval of volunteer tyranny over regular users. Volunteers aren't the top of the food chain, though. As Reddit is a hierarchy, Let's look at the people who hold power over volunteers, Reddit's administrators. Admins are paid employees hired by the company and wield ultimate power on the website. They can ban anyone they like from the entire site or even shut entire communities down for any reason or for no reason at all. Unfortunately, they are quite fond of doing the latter, banning innocent communities rather than those that actually break their declared rules. This may be due to the fact that Reddit's stated rules count for nothing and have nothing to do with the policies that are actually enforced. More on this later. That being said, the admins are not always silent when they issue a ban. They occasionally take the trouble to falsely accuse the ban community of breaking some rules in a pointless and pathetic attempt to justify the ban. They weren't always this trigger-happy. 
There was once upon a time when they would only close a community if it brought unwanted media scrutiny and bad PR to the whole website. The earliest example of this might be the Jailbait subreddit, which featured photographs that many argued were distasteful at best and borderline illegal at worst. Reddit allowed this community to thrive until it was noticed by CNN's Anderson Cooper, which brought a lot of negative attention to the website. Reddit responded by banning the community and introducing a rule that forbids any replacements that might feature similar content. We are not arguing against the closure of this community or any community for that matter. We are arguing against the dishonesty of the justifications given for many of the closures. In this case though, Reddit was pretty transparent about the reason of this ban. So let's fast forward to 2014, when a subreddit that rhymed with The Happening was banned for hosting leaked private photographs of celebrities. This closure caused considerable confusion in the Reddit community, as it was preceded by a blog post by the Reddit administration that implied the community wouldn't be banned. We uphold the ideal of free speech on Reddit as much as possible, not because we are legally bound to, but because we believe that you, the user, has the right to choose between right and wrong, good and evil, and that it is your responsibility to do so. When you know something is right, you should choose to do it. But as much as possible, we will not force you to do it. You choose what to post. You choose what to read. You choose what kind of subreddit to create and what kind of rules you will enforce. We will try not to interfere, not because we don't care, but because we care that you make the choices between right and wrong. Virtuous behaviour is only virtuous if it is not arrived at by compulsion. This is a central idea of the community we are trying to create. Five and a half years later, this paragraph is a great summary of everything Reddit is not and serves as a reminder of how far the website has fallen in its treatment of its users. Even for its time, the announcement was controversial, but for different reasons. It caused quite a stir for first implying the fappening and controversial communities like it wouldn't be banned, which was then immediately invalidated by the closure of the community in question. This forced the employees to post another announcement addressing the reason for banning the community, which boiled down to their inability to deal with copyrighted content and takedown notices. This announcement also triggered backlash, with some disputing the necessity of banning the community and wondering if there were alternatives to deal with the problems that the employees used to justify the ban. A few users compared this to the alleged censorship of the Gamergate controversy and the removal of the content that broke the scandal. We found these comments particularly incisive. We're banning the subreddit because we want Reddit to have a certain image in the public. This subreddit and its popularity are damaging that image. Reddit's actual policy is as plainly derived from its actions rather than its words. We believe in and support free speech until such a point as we determine that said participation in certain kinds of socially disapproved speech will be harmful to Reddit as a whole, that we shut down as soon as we recognise the damage. It is amazing how it still holds up today as an accurate analysis of the website's policy and its enforcement. There's also a few prescient comments warning of censorship being a slippery slope. They were right. The harbinger of Reddit's crackdown was the departure of CEO Yishan, the only executive at Reddit who seemed to have actually cared about free speech. Reddit co-founder Steve Huffman would return to replace him, though not before Ellen Powell had a brief stint as the interim CEO. This is perhaps one of the most memorable periods in Reddit's history as it set the stage for rampant censorship that was to come. The watershed moment that triggered Reddit's descent was the closure of Fat People Hate, which Reddit blamed on the community's conflict with Imager, a third-party image hosting website. Much of the blame was directed at the interim CEO Ellen Powell, who was already a divisive figure due to her, her politics. I remember thinking at the time that the backlash was excessive and perhaps misdirected. In hindsight, she wasn't nearly as bad as she was made out to be, and not nearly as authoritarian as the person who replaced her. Steve Huffman, who we'll call Spez, as that is what he goes by on the website, Spezza's first order of business was to create the quarantine, which restricted features in certain communities and forced users to manually opt in to viewing them. Spez pitched these restrictions as a way to restrict communities that featured distasteful content that nevertheless did not violate the Reddit's content policy. As an example of a controversial community that would be restricted, Spez pointed out Coontown, a community that featured content that could euphemistically be described as hostile to black people. This is what Spez said at the time. The content there is offensive to many, but does not violate our current rules for banning. 20 fucking days later, 
Spez went back on his word and banned the community he presented as an example of what he would not ban. Today, in addition to applying quarantines, we are banning a handful of communities that exist solely to annoy other Redditors, prevent us from improving Reddit, and generally make Reddit worse for everyone else. To be clear, we don't agree or disagree with the ban, but more so the dishonesty and disingenuous justifications. If Reddit truly cared about banning communities that exist solely to annoy other users, they would ban a lot of subreddits that inexplicably remain active to this day. CT wasn't banned because they annoyed other users and made Reddit worse for everyone else. Indeed, they were careful to comply with Reddit's public policy since they knew as a controversial community any violation, no matter how trivial, would instantly be used as pretext for permanent closure. We're talking about a community whose name I don't even like to say, but a nasty, racist community. Communities of, of news of only black people committing crimes. Major news sources, right? No commentary, no anything. So things like that. But we know, like, hey, this is wrong. And we're trying to find the argument for removing them. And we went back and forth on this for uh, a couple of weeks. We know what the answer is here. How can we get there? So. During that discussion, that's actually where we created the quarantine feature. It was like, we're not sure quite how to ban it yet or how to justify this, but this is not what we want users seeing. This is not what we want to be representing to the world. So we're going to put them in this, like, this kind of list of sanctions. The day before we applied the quarantining feature, I woke up and I just said, you know what? We're going to ban them on the grounds that they are in the way of our mission. CT was banned because Reddit believed it hurt their image and was advertiser unfriendly, which would be fine if Reddit was transparent about it but they weren't. This comment encapsulated our position more eloquently than we can. It would be nice if for once Reddit could just be honest. If you want to ban them for being extremely racist, then just come out and say so. You didn't ban them because they exist solely to annoy other Redditors. Enough of this, we're banning behaviour, not content nonsense. The content may be shit, and you may or may not be justified in banning, but at least be upfront about what you're doing. Reaction to the ban was divided. Free speech enthusiasts criticised the move as a betrayal of the commitments Spez and other executives had made to free speech. Social justice types celebrated the ban and considered it a step in the right direction, though many of them also considered it insufficient and called on the employees to ban more communities they felt harboured what they consider hate speech. We know hate speech can be a politically divisive term, but it is a term used in the industry. Consequently, We'll use it to refer to the content that Reddit and other social media platforms frown on. Commercially unplatitable content that is hostile to certain demographics. Regardless of ideological orientation, everybody will agree that this ban was the opening salvo in Spez's war on hate speech. Except their public content policy was never amended to announce their prohibition of the aforementioned speech, nor have they ever publicly admitted to banning communities for it. That said, the employees have no problem declaring this policy in private backroom conversations and threatening communities with restrictions and bans if they don't comply and enforce this prohibition. Let's look at a message an employee sent to now defunct subreddit. While we have no problem being a home for political speech, hate speech is another matter. We need you to keep hate speech from appearing in your subreddit, which means removing any that is currently here in posts as well as your sidebar and being proactive and not allowing hate speech to be used here in the future. The only problem we have with this directive is, why isn't this in the content policy page? Why was this directive consigned to a private message the employees never intended for public consumption? How does Reddit benefit from pretending to allow hate speech when it actually doesn't? Ironically, Reddit's guidelines say this, Secret guidelines aren't fair to your users. Transparency is important to the platform. If the employees can't be bothered to follow their own guidelines, why would anyone else? If they don't enforce their guidelines, why bother keeping the page up? Admittedly, the leaked conversation does display some transparency in that the employee made a direct threat of closure to force censorship of hate speech. However, he or she, or them, they, quan, qui, zippy, zoo, whatever, refused to explain what qualifies as prohibited content. I believe all of you understand what hate speech is, and are capable of enforcing rules against it so your community can continue to exist. If this is a requirement for communities to exist, why isn't it in the content policy already? If you're from the future and are watching this video months or years after it was uploaded, there is a chance Reddit may have formally codified their prohibition on hate speech in their content policy. At the time of making this video, 
No such policy exists, even though they've been banning that type of content for half a decade now. I feel very confident that your mod team can identify and enact rules to combat it. If you are unable to take care of the problem on your own, then you are in danger of quarantine and possibly more permanent consequences for your mod team. If it is a problem, why isn't it addressed in the content policy? This is just one instance wherein Reddit has strongly implied that enforcing their content policy is insufficient. Communities have to enact and enforce rules that go far beyond what is required by the publicly published policy. I am telling you that what you are doing now is not adequate and puts your community and mod team in danger. The community in question was banned a few months later. The charge used to justify the ban was not hate speech, but the proliferation of personal information, something the content policy explicitly forbids. Interestingly, the employees refused to prove the charge and instead insisted that they had warned the community's volunteers several times and they had refused to comply. But the admins refused to share proof of their defiance, citing privacy concerns. Reddit's prohibition on personal information, or doxing, is one of their older rules. However, its enforcement has been inconsistent in the punishment of communities that break it. For instance, a volunteer moderator of Against Men's Rights docked a user on her off-site blog and linked the page containing his personal information on the subreddit. The post was even given a green flare, meaning it was a volunteer speaking officially on behalf of the whole moderator team. The Reddit employees banned her for this, as evidenced by the fact that her user profile cannot be found. This is called a shadow ban. However, she made a new account which her fellow volunteers added to the moderator team, restoring her powers to post and censor content. This is called ban evasion and is explicitly prohibited by Reddit's content policy. And yet, against men's rights, the community that facilitated the ban evasion of a doxer went unpunished, though the evader's new account did get banned again. Hmm. Against men's rights. How is that allowed when... Misogyny and female hate were banned for harassing content. Speaking of double standards, let's talk about Reddit's inconsistent enforcement of another policy, the prohibition on violent content. Certain subreddits get away with it more than others. For an example, let's look at anarchism. In March 2017, an employee sent the community a private message asking them to censor comments for inciting violence. In response, a volunteer posted a public announcement declaring their defiance. No, anarchism will not remove comments with terms like bash the fash. No, we will not meekly follow commands from the site administration with the threat of quarantine or deletion. This alone should have been enough to warrant banning the community. Only a few weeks prior to this, Reddit had used refusal to comply with administration to justify the closure of a commercially unpalatable community. Anarchism, on the other hand, got off scot-free. The only person who received any punishment was a volunteer who posted the letter of defiance. The employees reacted to this deliberate disobedience by sending another strongly worded private message to other volunteers. Hey everyone, I'm writing to you about this post. As a moderator, it is your responsibility to uphold site-wide rules. We have contacted this subreddit several times regarding rules violations, and your subsequent response is not encouraging. We have been in touch with your mod team about comments that encourage real life harm to others. The original thread we contacted you about featured many comments encouraging users to attack or burn a bus full of people. That kind of incitement to violence is unacceptable. Other communities would have been banned already. Instead, this subreddit received yet another chance after disrespecting and defying the employees publicly. Reddit is not a platform for inciting violence. I want to communicate to you in the most transparent way possible that if there is not an evolution of the mods team's management of the community, we may take actions against the mods, the subreddit, or both. For the sake of the community here, we would very much like to avoid such action. Yep, the employees have certainly avoided any action. Anarchism is still active and still posting content that could be construed as glorifying violence. Reddit has also refused to punish users that post violent comments even after their employees have been presented with proof of repeated violations. Instead, choosing to permanently suspend the users who brought their attention to the violations. Way to encourage reporting violations. On the other end of the spectrum, Lego Yoda. Their ban was so unjustified it even confused the social justice types who usually clamour for censorship. This was a meme subreddit that occasionally got a bit edgy but harboured no hate or personal information, but was nevertheless banned for violent content 
Any community that tried to take its place was also banned for violating Reddit's content policy against creating or repurposing a sub to reconstitute or serve the same objective as a previously banned or quarantined subreddit. This rule is also, you guessed it, inconsistently enforced. Chapo Trap House 2, for instance, is still active and even unrestricted, despite serving the same objective as Chapo Trap House, which is very much quarantined. On occasion, the employees have even tried to facilitate evasion despite closing communities for less. In April 2019, the employees quarantined a community dedicated to promoting drinking water, all because its name contained controversial slang. The quarantine drew even more controversy and even outraged the social justice typeset against hate subreddits. In response, the employees tried to reach a compromise with the community and sent the moderators a private message which the volunteers then shared. Our expectations migrate to a subreddit with a name that isn't shocking for some users. <laughs> you kidding me? This is a definition of quarantine evasion, which you explicitly prohibit. We will not consider this ban evasion unless the new name is something offensive. You may own the website, but you don't get to define the English language. Evasion is evasion. Just be upfront about the fact that your rules don't matter. You just ban stuff you don't like and look the other way when it's expedient. Case in point, another subreddit had already risen to serve the same purpose. Hydro homies. In other cases, this would have been banned for quarantine evasion. But consistency doesn't seem to matter to the powers that be. In 2020, the employees decided they could no longer host any community with controversial titles and warned the subreddit of an impending ban and offered yet again to facilitate restriction evasion. We are happy to offer to move your subreddit to a new namespace via a brand new experimental tool. Your new subreddit would not be quarantined. Funnily enough, the employees and volunteers couldn't come to terms and the community was banned for harassing content, in particular the user of a racial slur in the subreddit name. I know the employees have a hard time with English, but words have certain definitions that are not flexible enough to be interpreted in any way they deem convenient. The word harass means to subject to aggressive pressure or intimidation, or in another context, make repeated small-scale attacks on the enemy. The use of offensive text in a static title fits neither of these definitions. Why don't the employees use offensive title as the reason for the ban instead of accusing the volunteers of harassment? This is far from the only instance wherein the employees have disseminated falsehoods to justify their indefensible and even accelerating censorship. If employees dislike a community, but yet cannot come up with a pretext to ban it even with the wildest misinterpretations of their policies, they simply kick the volunteers who moderate it out of their moderator positions, then ban the community for being unmoderated. If the volunteers complain of being kicked, their account gets suspended from the entire website permanently. If anybody tries to create another subreddit to replace the wrongly banned one, the replacement gets banned for ban evasion. Never mind the fact that the original did not break Reddit's content policy in any way. If it did, that violation would be displayed on the ban page as justification for the ban. In the case of Yol Can't Behave, the employees weren't content with kicking the volunteers out of their moderator positions and instead went nuclear by permanently suspending them from the whole website. The last moderator saw the writing on the wall and attempted to stave off the community's closure by restricting posting privileges to approved users and posted an announcement explaining his reason for doing so. Reddit admins are finally taking notice and cracking down on this sub for lax rules. They have just permanently suspended the creator of this subreddit without specifying a reason other than multiple repeated violations of Reddit's content policy. Based on past patterns, their next step is to ban this subreddit for being unmoderated. Only after banning all the moderators, as they have done many times in the past. I am the sole unbanned mod. That mod was then banned, and his announcement was removed by Reddit's anti-evil operations team that removes posts that violate Reddit's user agreement and content policy. How did this announcement violate anything? It did not incite violence, contain personal information, harass or bully anybody, and yet Reddit's anti-evil operators deemed it bad enough to warrant a permanent site-wide ban. Anti-evil. How delightfully ironic. What else do the anti-evil operators deem evil enough to warrant removal? A news report on how China may have prevented 95% of virus cases if it enacted measures after silencing whistleblowers' warnings. A news report about Joe Biden saying, we can only re-elect Donald Trump. A comment that said, please, pretty fucking please with a cherry on top, please. A comment that said, you're a fucking moron. 
two comments that recommended Ruckus, an alternative to Reddit. A comment that said, you guys are some serious libs, holy shit. Even my actual lib friends aren't as snowflakey as this. And this reminds me of how Dig died. Back then, the Dig patriots were using Yahoo groups to patrol the site and kill shit lib posts. Now the turn has tabled. Was this comment evil enough to warrant a ban from the entire website? Let us know in the comment section below. The only explanation we can think of for these removals is that much of the censorship appears to be automated. We suspect there's a threshold which, when exceeded, triggers an automatic response. If a post or comment gets reported enough times, it might be automatically removed and the user who posted it could face additional punishment ranging from temporary suspension to a permanent ban from the whole website. This is the removal that convinced us of automation being the culprit. Reddit user Redpilled Brit was permanently suspended from Reddit for suggestive content that some might describe as borderline illegal. If you follow the link to the violating content, you will see nothing because it had been scrubbed when the user was banned. However, you can substitute Reddit with remove edit in the URL to reverse the censorship and restore the comment that triggered the ban, which turns out to be, drumroll please, Avengers spoilers. Here is the comment if you don't believe it. If you're an Avengers fan who hasn't seen Endgame, scroll down to avoid spoilers. You can scroll up now. I don't think there's a single person on this planet who thinks this is sexual or suggestive in any way. The ban makes no sense unless you believe in the following series of events. Red Pilled Brit posts Avengers spoilers to troll fans of the franchise, which works in the sense that they get upset. So upset that they want to get him punished at all costs. Since what he did does not violate Reddit's content policy, they wager their best bet is to falsely accuse him of the worst offence they could report him for. It works, triggering some automated system to remove his comment without verifying the legitimacy of the reports that triggered this response. When asked about enforcement of policy violations, Reddit CEO Spez admitted in a podcast that they look at patterns of behaviour and use a great deal of machine learning. We'll look at patterns of reports. So if they create problems over here and get reported, then we'll go through and action that user. Um, we do have a fair amount of machine learning in there and trying to figure out like what's abuse and what's not. If this is indeed how most of Reddit's policy enforcement works, they have created a system ripe for abuse. To be clear, this is all speculation. Reddit does not share the inner workings of their operations. Automation does seem to be the most probable culprit since the censorship has become so rampant that it has even begun to target the social justice types who clamoured for it in the first place. For instance, the chief moderator of Feminism incurred a three-day ban for telling someone to fuck off. Another volunteer was suspended for saying, TERFs don't get to pretend to represent feminism here. Out. If you don't know what TERF is, it stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist, though the people who it refers to hate the term and consider it a slur. We think it's pretty apt as it is a term used to describe feminists who believe that people who transition from male to female are not women. Because of this view, TERFs are in vehement disagreement with feminists who do think people who transition from male to female are women and consider it hateful to argue otherwise. You can think of this as a civil war between feminists since they are as hostile to each other as they are to anti-feminists and try to get each other banned all the time, which forces Reddit into a dilemma. No matter who they side with or against, it will be a feminist they punish. So who do they ban? Reddit responded by suspending anybody reported for saying anything unpleasant which turned out to be the trans-supportive social justice types of Against Hate subreddits, a community dedicated to silencing other communities. Most of the punishment amounted to temporary suspensions, following which the volunteers were permitted to return to their positions of power as moderators, though we did find one instance of a moderator being suspended permanently for harassing TERFs. It's ironic to see the champions of censorship get silenced by the very beast they campaigned to create. Eventually, though, Reddit realised they were punishing the more politically correct feminists and promised they wouldn't ban them again. At this point, you might be thinking, what's the point of this video? To ask Reddit this question, what are your rules? No, the real rules, not these fake ones. The content policy doesn't matter. You let certain subreddits get away with breaking them all the time while banning others that are completely compliant with the policy on this page. Some may argue Facebook and other social media platforms are just as bad, if not worse, at censorship. But at least they admit to the fact that they remove controversial content. Reddit, on the other hand, pretends not to. Why continue to present a public policy which is downright misleading? Why keep your actual policy an internal secret while you punish communities for breaking a rule they don't even know you're enforcing? Why punish them for failing to guess what you want them to do? 
when you could tell them what you want and then punish them if they don't obey. Unless, of course, this is deliberate. So actually, our policies are deliberately, they leave a little wiggle room. I think that room for interpretation is important because we have to adapt with the, the changing situation. Why then do you pretend to require this from your volunteers? Secret guidelines aren't fair to your user. Transparency is important to the platform. You don't consider transparency important. You consider it inconvenient. So you've done away with it if indeed you ever were transparent in the first place. I had this uh, idea when I came back to Reddit in 2015. You know what Reddit needs? Clear, crystal clear policies. Mm -hmm. Draw a line and enforce it. The challenge is wherever we would draw that line, the users would go right up to it and stick yes. their nose over it and just waste our time. This is the only instance where they've been correct. Healthy communities have agreed upon clear, concise, and consistent guidelines for participation. By their definition, Reddit is not a healthy community and it's not going to get better anytime soon, given the employee's refusal to set clear, concise, and consistent guidelines. As bad as this hypocrisy and dishonesty is, this is far from the worst thing Reddit has done. You might ask, what could possibly be worse than silencing people who comply with everything required of them? Putting words in your mouth, or to be literal, putting their words in your comments. In 2016, the CEO edited comments that criticised him to say something entirely different from what the commenter intended and published. Worse yet, his alteration did not affix a modified comment with an asterisk that is usually displayed when users edit their own comments to warn readers that the comment has changed since it was first published. Readers would have no way to know that their comment was edited, let alone by an invisible third party. In simpler terms, this is indisputable proof that a comment that's displayed under a username may not necessarily have been posted by that user. The content may have been modified by someone who's not the user without the user's consent or even the user's knowledge. And there will be no trace of the manipulation, no evidence to prove it wasn't the user who wrote the content. Why does this matter? Because users can get in legal trouble for content posted on Reddit. Because some in the privacy community have reported Reddit discloses historical IPs and emails to law enforcement without first requiring a warrant. To be fair, the suspect in this case had it coming. But this doesn't negate the fact that users may not be the people who posted the content that is attributed to them. That their comments may be edited by someone else without their consent or knowledge. Now, Reddit publicly acknowledged doing this only once, though some might argue they had no other choice. The manipulation was so brazen it was caught in the act. The public apology that followed sounded less than sincere. Many of you are aware of my attempt to troll the trolls last week. I honestly thought I might find some common ground with that community by meeting them on their level. Find common ground by editing their comments without their consent or knowledge. While many users across the site found what I did funny or appreciated that I was standing up to the bullies. What the hell? Way to downplay what you did. He then tried to blame his breach of boundaries on the community whose comments he edited and somehow used the controversy to justify launching another wave of censorship and restrictions. We are now taking a more proactive approach to policing behaviour that is detrimental to Reddit. We have identified hundreds of the most toxic users and are taking action against them, ranging from warnings to timeouts to permanent bans. We will continue taking on the most troublesome users. Some might argue the most troublesome users are those who invade the privacy of others and literally put words in the mouth, the fingers. Reactions to the acknowledgement were polarised along political lines. Users who disliked the community in question joined the CEO in downplaying his behaviour, while members of the controversial community were appalled. This comment was perhaps the most measured and incisive response, conclusively explaining the severity of the implications in one sentence. This will be used as evidence in any court case involving the site that Reddit manipulates users' contents. The user who posted this comment has since been permanently suspended from Reddit. The CEO tried to defuse the controversy by saying, I most assuredly won't do this again. But how will we know? Given his track record at honesty and transparency, do you believe him? Let us know in the comments section below. If you found this video interesting, please like this video and share it too, because YouTube won't, and <laughs> Reddit definitely won't. And now a brief update on the channel. Due to ongoing issues, upload frequency will be noticeably decreased. If you held off on ringing the bell for fear of notification spam, this channel won't contribute to the problem.